On. Yeah. Hey. 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 Jeez, I already got a new heckler. The, 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 oh, I will heckle. <laughs> Here we are at Looney's for uh, Sports Backtalk with Bully and Ringer. And uh, the, are, are, are you all calmed down from your master's rant from this morning? Why? Oh, I had a little. Well, you, yeah. You, you, you went a little off the off Oh, the I grid, can't huh? believe the three people that won. I mean, Brucey and uh, Jan, uh, Marie Sandbeck. Yeah. They don't know anything about golf. They don't know nothing. Uh, the useful family. I mean, Jake, I understand, was the guy who picked it, so that, that explains <laughs> it. I knew it couldn't have been Brian. And then my brother, Jared and Patty. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, just proves again that you don't need to know anything about a sport to win these goofy pools. That's, that's probably What'd you do? Uh, I only picked two. I didn't go for the big six. I wanted to test the waters and watch and learn. And then next year we'll, we'll be ready. Who'd you pick? I picked uh, Justin Thomas and Dustin uh, Johnson. Okay. That's the two I went with. So you basically are probably but, the only one that got zero money back. Oh, I got zero money back, but I only lost 20 compared to... Uh, I lost what? five. Okay. That's I got 45 good. back. Yeah. Well, so, uh, here's what I did. I, I wrote down six people, and then I only went with two of them because, I want, like I said, I wanted to see what was going on. And if I'd have went with my six people, I probably would have... Similar to what I did. I, 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 yeah. Did you have Reed, though? I did not have Patrick Reed. Not many Reed. people have Patrick Reed. Yeah, and... Uh, I found out today the guy's not real well liked. I, I heard that yesterday or Saturday somebody was saying something about it, and so I went and did some snooping online. And uh, yeah, he's he's got a little bit of a, a checkered past. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. that's not the maybe the right word for it, but he's he's had some interesting discussions, and uh, uh, him and his family kind of like uh, Aaron Rodgers, not all on the same page. And, and well, he's uh, one, they don't even talk. I mean, they don't even get along. I mean, well, it's pretty scary that the wife had the parents and the sister thrown out of the U.S. Open three yeah. years ago. I mean, yeah. that's. That's how bad it is. Yeah. So. And his brother-in-law, who's from her, his wife's side of the family, is his caddy. Yeah. I understand he has a hard time keeping caddies. His mom actually caddied for him once years ago. Okay. And he was braying her and chewing her out right out on the course. Wow. Um, they asked Hedrick Stenson, yeah, or he Reed was saying, me and my buddy Hedrick, and they asked Hedrick about it. He says, I don't know if I've talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyways. Uh, uh, all, all that said, uh, doesn't matter. The yeah. guy guy can play golf, and uh, uh, I'm sure he has a lot of good in him that people don't know about. All everybody hears about is his bad, and uh, he's probably a good person. Yeah, uh, I don't know uh, enough to, to call him out. I, yeah, I, I exactly. I guess to me, the big thing that I take out of the weekend, you know, Ricky Fowler is getting closer and closer to being able to break through, and the other thing is. I can't figure Jordan Spieth out. How do you shoot a 66, 74, whatever he shot on Saturday, and then, go, and then go 64 on Sunday? I just, that, that doesn't add up to me. It yeah. just, he, I don't know what it is. Both him and Paul Casey went into 17 and 18, and uh, yeah. they par them both, and they, they um, shoot 63. They both shoot 63, but 17 and 18 are probably the most boring holes on the golf course. And I just wish. There was a way to make those, like, I would back up number five and figure out how to make that a par five, and but then which par five do they take out and make a par four? Yeah. yeah. Eight, number eight, number two, but uh, <coughs> number 18, number 17, they've tried to make it somewhat interesting. Well, since they lost the Eisenhower tree, it's kind of lost its... Yeah. But it's still there's it's a new still, tree. It's the Spieth tree. Yeah. See, well, that's on 18 now. Yeah, that's on 18. <laughs> that keeps getting tighter. But I think if they backed it up even more, I, I don't know. It just seems like a whenever somebody has a one shot, two shot lead, they can kind of coast it in, coast it in, and, and just get their par. But uh, anyways, uh, just another phenomenal, exciting, and I say it every year at the Masters. It just uh, never ceases to amaze me how exciting that tournament is, and it's different than anything other. Any other? It is, and it, you would think that with going back to the same, maybe, and maybe that's what it is, going back to the same place year after year, rather than like the PGA yeah. and the British and the U.S. Opens, where they switch around and go to other places. Uh, maybe that is kind of the allure of it because you already know what's coming up on 13. You know yeah. on Sunday, well, if you got to hit this putt, then you got to be in this spot. And I guess maybe for us junkies, that's 
maybe what makes it so much fun. Yeah, the, the, the old saying, the tournament doesn't start till the back nine at the Masters, holds true every year. You could say what you want about the cliches. I mean, I think the one year maybe Tiger ran away with it and Spieth, but uh, overall it's always exciting. There's a different kind of fun on every one of those holes until you get to 17 and 18. You didn't. You didn't comment back on my on on your boy Sergio. My text I sent to you on Thursday, and you've been off the grid like the entire week. I I was I was gonna like call up the, like the Twitter search party for Mike Bolstead. I was getting concerned. I got a saying: if you you have nothing to say, don't <laughs> just say something. Okay. Does that make sense that's as a that's, saying? That's fair enough. With that, that's the old fair. saying: if you don't have anything good to say about people, don't say it. Well, I can easily say stuff like that. Yeah. But I got on a little bit, very rare um, uh, yesterday, but I, I, I really have anything to comment or say. I mean, the okay. playoffs will start, and I'm expecting the worst than that. And uh, uh, I don't what know. About, what about Stahl getting his 42nd? I don't want to get in the NHL yet, but I don't want to forget. Yeah, well deserved. Uh, I wish he would have broke Gabbert's record yeah. instead of tie it, but uh, that's something he'll hold. Uh, eventually, somebody will break that. I don't know when and where, but. Uh, Eric Stahl's been a phenomenal uh, free agent pickup by uh, Chuck Fletcher and uh, probably the best one we've had in the, yeah. in the career. Of the, yeah. Good yourself. In the in the life of the Minnesota Wild. This is, yeah. So, uh, how about UMD in Notre Dame on Saturday night? Did you did you watch? It's painful to watch. It's painful to watch. No, it really is. And we had this conversation, I think, last week or the week before. And um, it's just two to one, one to nothing. And I know they have to play that way to win. But, and they just congest the front of the net. And there's five guys standing in front of the net whenever the puck's there. They just all break down. They don't care about the points because the kids have chin pads that are that wide. Uh, the goalies have pads that are this wide, and it's just so much clog and fill, and uh, it's kind of looking like rugby on skates because there's just no room for any of the finesse quality players. And, and I, I'm still trying to find out where that high-end quality hockey player is in college hockey. I, I, don't, I don't know. Donato would be the closest. If he doesn't win the Hobie Baker, I'd be real surprised. But other than him, I mean, Greenway's... I mean, he's been average with the Wild, and I didn't expect anything more yeah, from him. I mean, yeah. I'll give him a fair shake next year, but if he doesn't produce, he will be the next Colton Gillies of the Minnesota Wild. And and I don't see, I mean, you can see it, Terry, and some of them show a little bit, but like Borgman kid from uh, Sweden or wherever, Finland. So, um, I mean, there's players, but the, the days of dominant players, I think, are gone. I think Because uh, everybody, everybody's, everybody's so good. good. Everybody's good. The, the overall 20 players are way better than they ever used to be. Sure. But that also makes them sound and strong and tough defensively, which is why you get 2-1, to 1-0, 3-2, one, 3-1 one three, three, games. So are you saying you didn't watch, or you did watch? I had it on, and I... Watched, but I there's so many games and other junk going on. And like what? What else was going on on Saturday night besides the national championship? Game? All the wild were on. Yeah, eventually. they didn't start till 9:30. Yeah, but I had to prep. Uh, <laughs> there were some other things. What were some other things? Nothing. That was the beauty of it. There wasn't anything else to worry about. No. That's as far as I was concerned. Uh, maybe My was... Dodge won. That's all I got. To, that's what I want. Maybe Guy Fieri was on the Food Network. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Like, anyways, I watched it. Uh, it didn't have me on the edge of my seat. Um, I've turned into more of a Scott Sandlin uh, fan than I was five years ago. Sure. Uh, I think uh, uh, the guy's a quality coach, and he's uh, you know, he seems a little more tame and a little a little nicer guy. Too. So I'll ask you because you're you're the you're the hockey guy. Yes, I uh, am. And if I if I had a question, you'd be the first guy I'd go to. UND plays with five 19-year-old, 18-year-old defensemen, probably rotating six guys through. Five of them are teenagers. Mm -hmm. Is it that those defensemen are that good, or is it because of the system that they oh, play? they're the good. They're good. They're good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> every one of them, if you notice, and it goes back to Pionk, who's playing with the Rangers right now, they can all skate and they all move, and that's also what the Wild are trying to develop. Good skating, puck moving defensemen, 
that can that can defend and and they're all intelligent cerebral players and this Perinovich is off the off the map uh, as far as his skill and talent and reading of plays and he is a free agent yeah, is he going to get drafted? Don't be surprised. He can't get drafted. His draft year was last year. So he can't be drafted? So he's, he's got the I thought balls. They were, I thought they were talking about the fact that he could be drafted on the on the broadcast. And I'm not saying right or wrong. I just... I don't... Uh, my, no, he, I, uh, okay. his draft year was last year. He only got one draft one year. Unlike draft baseball year. where you can okay. go back into the pool. Okay. And I, I might be wrong, but I, I thought his draft year was last year and he becomes a free agent, which means... Uh, somebody's going to come for a, him. Somebody's going to come knocking with a big check. Yeah, if you're going to get drafted, you know, fourth round on down, you're better off not getting drafted because uh, then they can just try to sign you and, and, and sign you a lower end deal. He, yeah, he's open money for him right now. Okay, so let me let me go off. Yes, of he would look good on the wild. He would look good on the wild. You, I think last year we talked about this when the Wild went out of the playoffs last year when they lost to St. Louis, and you were talking about we need to get bigger, yeah. meaner defensemen. Yeah, so are you saying that the Wild are going I in think the wrong direction? No, I think we have. I think we got Sealer, Susie. So we got some big guys, but we got at the same time. We well, we got rid of Riley. Guys. I think, uh, and we want to get some example. big guys that can do those yeah. other things. And Suter's big and strong. He, he doesn't play mean or, or, or you know stuff like that. But he's strong, and nobody will bowl him around. And uh, it'll be interesting because playing Winnipeg, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, it's not a good first round opponent for a team like the Wild, who's pretty much all finesse. Okay. Where else do you want to go? What else? I don't know. You got the book, man. We can uh, we can start with that, or we could try something did, did, else. Did you, did you watch any curling last night uh, with the World Championships? Why between? would I watch that? I don't know because it was on. Maybe. I, How, did you ever figure out why Schuster's team wasn't in it? Uh, because I believe that they didn't qual after they came back. They had another qualification for the Worlds, and they didn't. Uh, okay. Or maybe they abdicated because they were too busy sitting out in Vegas soaking up the rays and and whatever else. So, um, yeah, I I I don't know 100%. So, but the Americans did make this. They were the sixth team into the playoffs and uh, ended up losing to uh, Canada in the, I guess you'd say the quarterfinal mm -hmm. round. And uh, Canada dropped a dropped a laid an egg last night. To, Gushu uh, didn't. Yeah, uh, not a good year for Canadian uh, Olympic curling and, and World Cup. I mean, they, they're usually the dominant team. Pretty interesting. It was in Vegas, the World Championships, and nice. uh, and it was unbelievable. The Canadian crowd they had there last night. It was. If you would have told me in Vegas, I would have said, "Ringer, you and I got to be there for sports back talk." That would have been fun. Yeah. Yeah. The next time you got to alert me on that, and we'll check out with the KCC board and. I, See if they'll send us. That would be great. And uh, I think the next two are, are over uh, either, I think, are both in Europe. And then I think they're talking in three years it'll be back in Canada probably. So Good. maybe maybe in 2021, maybe we get to take a trip to Winnipeg or something. Yeah. And, and are you, are you going to any of the wild games coming up in the playoffs? <sighs> I haven't looked at my schedule. Sunday's the only possibility, but I was hoping that it would be a noon game, a 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock game, but it's 7 o'clock. and. You know me. I like to, if I go to St. Paul, I'm, I'm there. For, I'm there for two nights. I'm going to absorb the atmosphere. I'm going to take part in the the libations. Well, they play at home on Sunday and Wednesday, right? I wrote uh, it down and had a change. Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. And then I think it's Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, anyway, yep. uh, yeah. My uh, my wife is heading off to your uh, favorite place, uh, Florida. And nice. uh, for she's leaving Wednesday and coming back the following Monday, so I'm kind of locked in at home with the Elijah. Okay. So it's just gonna be me and him. A and, bonding. Uh, and a little little father son time and. Uh, Good for you. Well, uh, so so I don't. Which think part of Florida? She's going to Cocoa Beach. Oh, nice. Really nice. So I I, I I understand that that's on the Atlantic side and that's not as nice as the Gulf side. Yeah. But you go. Don't worry about. It. Just walk right through. It doesn't matter. Honest. So we uh, yeah, yeah so that was smooth as a gravy sandwich that been over in there. Right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, I do want to mention uh, spring sports uh, before I forget. Also, uh, you know, we, if you haven't looked outside, it, it isn't very nice. But I was at the school uh, last night, which was Sunday night, and our new softball coach uh, Shelby Nosen, uh, they were out, out with the rakes on the field. I heard they had snowblowers out there. The snowblowers have been out. The fields are cleaned off. The girls have a home softball game scheduled for Thursday. 
they're going to play that game. I'm making that prediction right now. They were out practicing on the field tonight. They are going to have that field ready somehow, some way. They are going to play why? that game on Thursday. Why? Because it's scheduled. I don't know why. They want to play that game. Plus, they're going to Duluth on Friday and Duluth on Saturday to play softball games. And I'm sure they've got artificial turf in Duluth. So I'm sure that those games are going to go. So I think Coach wants, that's the only home game they've got scheduled in, in April. You know, there's she nothing wrong game. with extending the fall spring seasons when school isn't existing at the, at the end of the year. Just start these sports when they should be started, which is the end of April. Make sure they got good weather. They got good fields. So it so, makes no sense whatsoever. And so, then go into mid June. What's the big whoop? I I, I, I think I. Do you I, have to I, be in school? No, no because I, I, there's been graduations where kids had to miss because they're in the playoffs. Iowa does their baseball, softball in the, makes in, no sense. In, in the summertime. Wisconsin does the same. Uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion about moving golf to the fall because they could start in the summer but here, and, yeah. and, and they could end their, have their, their tournament, their state tournament in early October and they'd start their season like in August or late July. Um, so there's a lot of discussion out there right now about moving these sports and you get a couple of back-to-back -back springs like we, we've had here where I think last year or the year before, I don't think we had our first home game till like April 28th. This is, this is going to start in the cities. The southern schools can't even get out to play right now hardly. So that really is going to start some discussion, and I wonder well, where it's going to go. Well, here's the deal. The reason you can't do what you're suggesting is you're sabotaging more sports. That's all. We don't need any more sports in ISD 361. I agree. Okay? I agree. So we got way too many already, in my opinion. I mean, uh, they're all watered down, and we don't have enough good athletes in all the same sport. We're separated by four of them, so you got a little bit of here, a little bit of there, little, and we can't win in anything. So I know that's a big opinion of mine, but you cannot, I mean, golf is a good idea. It should be in the fall, but you got to take something that's, or it should be in the fall, and then you got to take something that's in the fall and put it in the spring. The spring. How about cross country? I know track and cross country are pretty much the same. Uh, could you do that? I, 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 you know, I just say start my whole thing with what you're saying is start the seasons later. And uh, so, uh, would you would you be in agreement? And I'm just going to go this way: you can't play your first baseball, softball game, and or you can't have your first golf meet until May 1st, and you got to be done by July 4th. Start the season April 15th. That's not what do we? What, the track has to start in March, really? Track's probably the only one they can maybe get away with because, you know. But in southern Minnesota, a, a softball game on April not this 2nd. Year. <laughs> not this year, but most years, April 2nd is like no problem. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, 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 we're talking about a, an issue. And, and this has been happening for the last five to seven years with that global warming thing starting to take effect. Yeah. And, yeah. uh. Yeah, that's what it's called. Right? It's called global warming. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know. You know, it might be happening, but it's not affecting the, the I, state of Minnesota yet. I hear about all the old folks in International Falls, like, you know, I won't mention any names, but back in the 60s, the winters were horrible, and the snow, and the cold, and, but I never heard them mentioning that we had snow, like, into April, and everything, they never mentioned that, and it no. seems like we're getting more and more of it. It's going know. on for another week, so. Um, At least. That's what I would do if I was uh, involved with the State High School League, uh, is just move these sports back to mid-April and start them then. You can and, practice. And, and have the state championships by last week in Mid June. Mid to end of June, big whoop. And be done by the 4th of July. Yeah. Uh, I do also want to mention Amber T. Lander was named the Duluth News Tribune's Player of the yeah, Year. Good for Congratulations her. to her. Uh, just uh, five other, uh, four others, she makes the fifth. Four other Broncos have ever received that honor in the last 25 years. Uh, she's the first girl to have that honor mm -hmm. for the Falls. So uh, big congratulations to her. It was, uh, uh, I think it was cut and dry. I don't, I don't think there was anybody that could compare to the numbers that she put up goal-wise and point-wise. It just, yeah. and, and the way she can skate and the things she can do. And she's a very good player, very skilled. I guarantee you, though, she would have given up every one of those goals and assists if they would have got to that state tournament, and uh, yeah. she didn't. But uh, good for her going on to St. Scholastica, <coughs> and uh, she'll be a good asset to the Saints. So. I like uh, Little T. I've always uh, Little T. liked uh, her game, and I liked her attitude, and uh, she's always very, uh, how do you put it, 
congenial when I see her and always happy. So keep it up, little T. Okay. Uh, do the Timberwolves uh, wrap up a playoff spot tonight after they beat no. Memphis and Denver loses? No. Do they wrap up a spot when they beat Denver? Just listen on to Wednesday? Dan Barrero. He was talking about they have to make the playoffs. Uh, we know they're going to get beat up by Golden State or Houston. They yeah. can somehow move up to the number six spot. I think they can give give Portland everything they want. But um, is it good enough to get seven and eight? Where again, I think they've underachieved. Yeah. So getting a seven or eight, then getting blown out by uh, in four straight by Houston. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, if they could play Houston or, or Golden State, at best they win one game, maybe. At best. At best. Uh, but it is possible, if things could go right, UND style right, that they could get the number four seed. If they win their two games and everybody else loses, blah, 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 the Timberwolves could actually move up to a number two spot in the, in the, in the or the number four spot, excuse me, in the playoffs. So, hey, you never know, but uh, that, that would make things a little no, more interesting. Really, I'll give you credit. The you, you, are, you are like out there too much optimism. I mean, get back to bully realism, which means the they'll be lucky. To, they'll be lucky to get an eight. The Timberwolves make it into the playoffs. You heard it. Worst here. defensive team in football or er, <laughs> basketball might be the 26 and 26th of two years under Thibodeau. They brought him in because it's a defensive guru. You still got to have the players that want to play defense. Ah, it doesn't matter what system key. you run. They got Jimmy Buckets no. back on Friday night, and uh, they held, held the, the the strong, strong L.A. Lakers to 96 points. The what? The strong, strong, the strong. Kobe play? <laughs> Lou Alcindor, Kareem? 96 points they held the Lakers to on their home floor. After being out on the coast for a while, good job, Timberwolves. Wrap it up tonight against Memphis with a Denver loss, and we're in the playoffs. Denver plays tough one. Denver plays San Antonio, I think. I even took yes, a, they do. Is that who it is? I think. No, they yeah. play Portland. You're right. It is Portland. Uh, what? It is Portland. Good job. No, you said what? Yeah. You're, You're right, right okay. Michael. Like Michael, that. you are right. All let's, right. So it's time to talk to the NHL yeah, playoffs. Yeah, we don't want to bore let, these people. Let, too let, much. Let's get to it. Uh, you want to start in the east or the west? We can start east. Let's start in the east. Let's start with Washington versus Columbus. Wow, is that a, is that a tough series? It's kind of funny that both uh, New Jersey and uh, Columbus were both sitting uh, players. Uh, Philadelphia was working their butt off to get in. Uh, I think Columbus drew a good seed. They stayed you think away. So? From, they 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 stayed away from uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, and that's key. Um, Washington's beatable, and it's been proven over the last, well, five years. They, they might win all the President's Cups and get the most points every year in their division, but they're always a early exit, first or second round, kind of like the Wild. But this team's loaded. Washington's loaded. Huh? Goaltending's going to be a big issue. Borowski for Columbus. Uh, Felino's going to be healthy. I got uh, Columbus put uh, pulling off the upset. Uh, the coach trots will be let go, and Washington's going to revamp the whole team and uh, start over. And wow. I got Columbus getting out of that, getting I, that series. I got Washington in six. Let's move on to the other uh, series in that division, the Pens versus the Flyers, the battle for Transylvania. Yeah. And uh, That's a dreaded matchup for the Pen Penguins. Yeah? I think they, they don't like that in-state Rivalry. There's enough. There's enough already Plus, on. Plus, as you know, no fans like to go to Philadelphia for any sporting event. So now yeah, the fans are probably batteries. just going to stay home, even though they're fellow Pennsylvanians. But Philadelphia fans don't care. They hate everybody. Uh, I do have the Penguins squeaking this out. This will go seven games. I'll I have agree. to win it in Pe Pittsburgh. Penguins in seven, looking for their third straight Stanley Cup. Claude Giroux, watch him. Who? Him and, him and Jacob Voracek. Claude yeah. Giroux, great yeah. players. Yeah. Uh, Tampa versus New Jersey, the one four. Uh, New Jersey probably a year or two away is going to use this as a great experience for them, uh, but I do have Tampa Bay, who I think is the most skilled and talented team in the East. Six six games. Uh, for I that. say five. All right. Boston versus Toronto. Ooh, this Boston. is a tough This year. is a tough one, yeah. You know, I can't go against my old coach out there in Toronto, but Boston's been one of Boston's the best good. teams in the East. Here's what's going to happen. Boston's been slipping. They had a crucial game yesterday to clinch the number one spot. Do it. They lost to a Florida team who did not make the playoffs. I think they're going to shut down Marshawn, Pasternak, and uh, Michelle Bergeron. I don't think Boston has enough depth, enough scoring after that line. I say uh, Toronto are wired and they will win this in seven. 
Boston at home in TD Ameritrade or wherever it is, TD Center, whatever it is, in seven games, Boston wins it and comes through. Okay. In seven. All right. Close. Fair enough. All right. So we got, Washington, we got Washington versus uh, the Penguins. I got. Uh, or excuse me. You got, got Columbus, Columbus and excuse Penguins, me, versus and the Penguins. Uh, Columbus has proven they can't beat the Pe Penguins, so I got the Penguins in the finals. Okay. I got Washington versus the uh, Penguins, Ooh, and uh, I, I, I got Washington Ooh. in seven. There it is. And if Washington great, does great. not reach the conference finals, Barry Trotz will be fired. I, I'm okay with that. So I got that, Pittsburgh, that, you got Washington. The, the, the rain is done in for okay. Pittsburgh. It's over. Over on the other side? Tampa and Boston. I, I got, got Boston. Tampa and Toronto. I got, uh, you got Toronto. I got Boston in six. I got Tampa in six. Okay. And then Fair. we got the two best teams, Tampa Bay and I got Pittsburgh. We, you got. I got Washington and Boston. Okay, so we're totally different on that. And I got the Tampa Bay. Ning, uh, the Ning. Lightning, the most talented team in the East, and the, they got a, a, a McDonough back on defense. They're 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 solid back on D. Vizilevsky, the goalie, they're good there. I don't think uh, anybody's going to touch Tampa. They will be in the Stanley Cup Finals at winning six. Boston beats Washington in six games. Boston in Boston the final. Boston into the Stanley wow. Cup Final. Teddy Donato making a difference. Let's move on to the West. All right. And uh, oh, we'll, remind me who I got again. Okay. Tampa and you got Boston. I got Tampa. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Vegas versus uh, Vegas. LA. Is out. Vegas In going six. out. Six, that's what I said. Six games. Yeah, yeah. First time we have agreed. It's on been that. a fun year. Been cute, but uh, it's over. They went up north. Uh, played the three Calgary, Edmonton, and uh, Vancouver games. I think they won. Got a point or maybe a point at the most. And. Uh, so I don't see much happening there. I think they're they're ball they're they they ran the course. Yeah, they, they ran the course. Great series, great year. You can only tell your players were the underdog for so long, and then, then eventually they're gonna yeah they're gonna yeah, understand like and realize point. they are. Anaheim versus San Jose. That's a tough series. Ooh, I never go against Getzlaff though. I think the yeah. best peer captain in, in the NHL today, even better than uh, Sydney. But uh, I got Getzlaff and the Anaheim Ducks moving on to play in uh, the Kings. I got Anaheim in uh, in seven as well. well. We all want to see the Kings uh, Anaheim. That's going to be fun. Go ahead. Nashville versus Colorado in the uh, Central. Nashville in four. They'll sweep that series. Gonna sweep uh, it. Colorado. Uh, lucky, to, lucky to be there. And uh, again, they can shut down. They got two different lines that can shut down McKinnon, so uh, I don't see, they can't get any other scoring out of the other three lines. Uh, okay, there so, could be some blowouts in that series. So, ask, so answer me this if you can. No if, goal if, either. If, if Colorado were to somehow pull this off, how big of an upset would it be? How monumental oh, would it be? Not U.S. Olympic uh, upset, but uh, there's been worse. Uh, okay. uh, I it would, would be, say, it would be um, pretty big. It would be like uh, Cleveland beating the Pittsburgh Steelers. Maybe. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, the Jets versus the Wild, of course, that's the series we've been avoiding and kept keeping to the last, and you've already kind of said that you don't see the Wild having a I chance just, because it's a bad matchup. It's it's a really bad matchup, and they got all their defensemen healthy. Wild are hurting. Um, they, they'll bang around our small guys, Parisi and Granlin, better get used to uh, getting their backs get hit. hit by Buffalo, and uh, it's going to be a hard-fought series. Uh, I think the Wild won't embarrass themselves, but they will go down in six. Okay, I got the Wild winning in six. It's because Wild I winning, mean, Wild winning in six. I will take that bet right here on the air. If oh you want boy! Some of that. What, 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 what are we betting a, uh, a dinner at? Libation right here. Okay, very good. Fair so enough. as soon as the Wild's out, we'll be back. You we'll, can, uh, we're coming here. You can buy me a scotch. There we go. All right, so uh, I've got Nashville in the wild, and uh, I got the wild taking down the Predators. This and moving is, on to the Western Conference Finals. This is why I want Winnipeg kind of in a way. Nashville and Winnipeg would be, be an classic. amazing huh? series, and everybody wants it. Winnipeg uh, will take it to seven games, but Nashville, okay. two best teams in the NHL right here, Nashville really? against Winnipeg, uh, take Nashville to go Even on. Even better than Tampa. Better team, not more talent. Okay, uh, let's go back out to the west. Uh, we've got both got L.A. and Anaheim. Ooh, that's a that that series will be a bloodbath. That that'll be the <laughs> must see and the best. And part, you can stay up there. It'll way. be that late game. You know, you'll watch the early ones, you, the Washingtons and the Pittsburghs, and you'll get ready with the popcorn and and uh, uh, glass bottled water and and. Uh, uh, Wash or L.A. and Anaheim will be a great series, as would Winnipeg and Nashville. It's going to be fun out in the West. 
I got my boy Getz left, and, and he's going to lead him to the final. Anaheim in six games uh, over L.A. Yep. So I got Anaheim in the wild. You got, got Anaheim in Nashville. Anaheim in Nashville. And so you got I Anaheim. Got Nashville. You got Nashville. Taker in five. That, Ooh. I think the only series that will give uh, Nashville a hard time will be the, the Jets if they get by the wild. That's why. I mean, the wild can beat them. If they get kind of Jake Allen-like uh, play – uh, out of Dubnik, they can beat Winnipeg, but I don't see it happening. I got Nashville and Tampa Bay meeting in the Stanley Cup for 2018. And I've got Anaheim beating the Wild in seven games in the Western Conference, so I got Anaheim. Oh, you get and Wild's Boston. big mystery tour went all the way to the finals without Ryan Suter. What yep. do you think of Jordan Greenway? You think he's playing in the playoffs? I wouldn't. Well, it's between him and Ennis is what I'm hearing. Depends right? what kind of, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, think Ennis will get a first start. If he plays like he did the first game uh, or the last game of the year against San Jose, he's going to get another shot. But uh, yeah, I, I would put Greenway up. It's good box. to have that kind of pressure on somebody. To, to, to Greenway is like just like Tuck. Huge guy, but doesn't play at a mean level. Same okay. old kids out of, he's a New, New York kid. Oh, I thought the, you were going to go out to Those it. Boston kids, I tell you. All right, so you've got Tampa and, and Nashville in the yes, Stanley sir. Cup. And you've got, did you say? Sorry. I am taking all the way Nashville. They will win the Stanley Cup. And uh, this could be their first of three wow. in the next five years. Yep, They're going to be wow. like the Blackhawks of the West. Okay. I've got uh, Boston you, versus Anaheim. Not? They're loaded everywhere, Ringer. And, I, and I'm going with Boston. In seven games, take down Boston Anaheim. and Anaheim. Boston and Anaheim, and the Bruins are your the big bad Bruins against the big bad Anaheim. You want like a big old brawl at the East end. Coast, West Coast. The TV yeah. people are happy. They and who got do you got winning? I got Boston. The Bruins bringing home the trophy again. Did they win it in fifteen or sixteen? Uh, Derek remember? Sanderson back in sixty nine. Six, yeah, there you go. Derek Sanderson. Bobby Orr comes out of the my all time favorite players. So so there's Gilbert Perot. Did you see my tweet on him? I did not. I Everybody should have got to see Bobby Orr and Gilbert oh, Perot yes, I did on the see ice that at the now. same time. That, that was magic. Anyways. I do want to mention, I guess, uh, the thing, uh, the accident up in uh, yeah. Saskatchewan. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'll say it this way. Horrific, horrible. But what class by the Blackhawks and the Jets. I don't know if you saw it on Saturday yeah, night. Yeah, I did. Everybody with a Humboldt name on the back of their jersey. Teams lined up around Together. the center circle, yeah. alternating teams. Yeah. Uh, the true sign of respect, uh, even talking about it right now, still brings gives me chills. I had chills yeah. when I saw it on Saturday night. Uh, that is uh, super special. Uh, people ask me why I love sports. Uh, I, I love it because of the competition and everything else. But when crap like this happens, Everybody comes together and everybody starts pulling in the same direction. Whether you like the guy next to you or not, they're all looking the same way uh, at the Frozen Four. Uh, the teams with the moment of silence, they put the Humboldt symbol in the, in the uh, center circle at XL Energy Center. Pure class, uh, just awesome. Uh, I think I saw last night or this morning, they've already raised $4 million on the GoFundMe page for these, for these families. Uh, people giving up their flights so that people can fly in and get to their families it's uh it's uh it's a uh, it's a sad thing but boy i'll tell you, you just you just remember what the big picture what it's all about yeah and the hockey family and i i i i, I believe i'm in that hockey family I, I you know it's it's such a close-knit worldwide group and uh uh and not saying other sports aren't as close but hockey seems to be the tightest knit from Nova Scotia all the way over to Vancouver from Los Angeles all the way over to New York it's just a tight-knit uh, hockey community and, and, and I don't mean this word in a bad way it's almost like a cult and, and, and I don't mm -hmm. like said I don't I, I mean it's you buy in and you're in I yeah. mean you you don't go in part way you're you're bought in and, and that what's what and I think it. a lot of that has to do again I think hockey isn't is it can't be played by a lot of people because it's very difficult. Yeah. Where baseball, football, basketball, they've got to be great ath athletes, don't get me wrong. But it's such a unique thing in that hockey, you're not running, you're skating. All the other sports, you're running, fielding, yep. uh, hitting, and different things like that. So the hockey community, and I look back, Ringer, and this is where it really touched home with me, all the way from youth, Pee Wee's Bantams, where we drove with our parents to all the games on uh, skinny little highways to the buses of high school, college, all the buses I've been on. And then even the last few years, you and I have taken some team buses and 
uh, anything can happen on those trips, and uh, it, it's really um, amazing. And thank God it hasn't. Yeah, but I know where it's you're going. only it's happened one time that I can remember uh, with that many people involved uh, in in think my of, lifetime. Think so of that's the, fifty-seven years. Think of the probably the millions of miles that are put on by yeah. hockey and basketball and all whatever buses in the winter. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, the it, falls it, travel more than any team. Huh? We're traveling 100 miles both ways, and uh, thank God we have uh, great bus drivers in School District 361, and they're the ones that are, you know, getting these kids these games safe. And but sometimes it, even if you're driving safe and you're doing everything right, it's always that other driver you got to worry just about. Just don't know. So just don't know. Anyways, God bless uh, that yeah, city of Humboldt sure. near the Broncos, just like we're the Broncos. And uh, boy, it's a, it's a tough tragedy and uh, it's tough to deal with. I uh, just want to mention uh, Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony coming up in a couple of Saturdays, the 21st. We are sold out. We have uh, almost 200, Good. almost 260 people wow. have tickets, and we decided that we needed to cut it off so that we can have the room to. Well, so people want can. hot food. We want hot. If you food. have more, you know, 300, 400 people. Uh, it's pretty tough to, to logistically do that, and uh, I think that's a good number. And uh, uh, good, and maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do a little show or something. I hope uh, I hope uh, everybody uh, is understanding of it. That why we had to cut it off. I I, I feel bad as being being the chairman. Uh, I feel bad that we are going to have to tell people no, we can't sell you a ticket anymore because we're full. But it just it's the truth. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, uh, hey, come on out and uh, and 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 see the guys uh, before or afterwards if you're interested. Uh, it's it. Uh, to be a heck of a, a heck of a weekend. Well, you do a great job, Ringer, and uh, the things become huge. And uh, just remember, people, next year, get your tickets early so you don't get left out. Perfect example. Paul, you ready for some Q and A? Let's finish this thing. Yeah, quick question. When you're talking about this 20 here, 20, 40 there, kind of deal. You're talking doll here, monopoly money. What, what, what are we talking here? Because well, potato we chips, I thought we were. Potato, potato chips. chips. Potato I'm just chips. Curious what the twenty and forty. Yeah, is. I don't know how many bags, how many potato chips are roughly in a small bag of Old Dutch. Mm. Small bag? I don't mm. know. Probably, 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 probably. Let's probably. break open a bag and count those bad boys. <laughs> I would guess. Well, you sell the mini minis. You sell the Val, uh, Halloween Doritos. There's probably 15, <laughs> 20 in there. Sell the real ones. So people can share them. I, I get that bag. Diana's not getting many of them. <laughs> okay. So I would say, yeah, I, I won five five potato chips. So if you take a bag. Well, just think of five bags. Yes, I would just be handed out five little potato chips. It wouldn't be much of a meal. It would be a nice little snack. I'd be a happy guy. There you go. You know, <laughs> it's better to receive potato chips than to pay other people oh, potato well, chips. Well, then don't let the good floors to the eye. Yeah. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, you're just always here, aren't you? What else? What else we got? Did you hear about uh, the MPR deal? Vote yeah. your favorite lake. I did not hear. Did about not that. hear that. Like Should I get on there? The Winnie Lake gets a band playing on the shores of the lake. Really? So Winnie so Lake right now is the number one. Really? Shock! I can't. I, well, what I'll have to do? Right up there, but What's number what one? Is, but What's number one? Yeah, Minnetonka. Um, no. Crane Lake. Crane Lake is number one. Huh? Oh, we can beat Crane Lake. Crane Lake, and they said Crane Lake is up. Well, how do we get on this so I can forward that? We got to go to npr.com or something? Okay, okay npr.com. I'll send a message out. I got like, oh, a couple million friends. Get it out on and, Twitter. Uh, we got to win that because what, where would they play? They will play on the shores of the lake. But we don't know where. I know. So then the politicking and lobbying begins. begins. Right. Yes. Right. And they said they'd play right after ISO. So the Ooh. follow question is, do you think we'll have a record ISO? Uh, it's going uh, mid-May. We're not. Uh, you won't be able to fish in a lot of spots on the opening. Unless you're in an ice fishing house. Uh, you won't have that, but uh, there'll be spots. Rainy Lake will not be clear to Kettle Falls, so uh, I say no ice out on the 15th. Wow, no ice out for the ice out will not be before the open. No, not before Impossible. May 12. Okay, we got another week of this. Ice is being made right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I'm you see it? It's, it's cracking. People have been on the ice and they hear that cracking in 48 inches of ice or 48, yeah, 48 inches uh -huh. of ice. You know how long it takes? Let's get a bag of chips and, a, and some ice that's 48 inches deeper and let's see which one goes quicker. 
There we go. The chips rule. I'll take the chips. <laughs> who, won, who won against the Lakers? The, the, those wolves came through, man. Who's the wolves? Oh, the late, you're talking Fort Francis Lakers, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm dual I, citizen. See, I, I should. Dryden, Who they Dryden, play? The Dryden won 10 to 2 last night in game 5 to, blow, to end the series. So the, the Lakers are done. Any I bet there are a few fights at the end of that one. That yeah, I think it got a little. I think it got a little out of hand. It was uh, it was five two, and they kept pouring it on, and and I think Dryden wanted to make a make a make a statement. Yeah. Speaking of which, you mentioned ten to two. Ten to two. It reminded me that I did my research. Remember, I said there was a game in the NHL back in the early seventies. Well, this was nineteen seventy. It was the Montreal Canadiens against. I think it's the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Montreal had to score five goals or win the game to get in the playoffs. Okay. Okay. And uh, they weren't winning the game. It was five to two midway through the second period. They pulled their goalie for the rest of the game. They gave up five empty netters and ended up losing <laughs> ten to two. So that's what can happen in the playoffs or trying to get in the playoffs with the way the NHL is with these points for ties and stuff. Sure. Okay. So I got and that. Any other questions? Any other questions? Nothing? Ice out. They're fishing on the river. Ice out. He's saying after the opener. <laughs> May 15th. May 15th is the number? Is yeah. May you don't have to, you know, just because Bowie's up here, you don't have to do everything I say. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> Although he's a guide, he knows a little more than I do. May 10th. What's that? 10th of, May. 10th of May, Jack Havlock, he's pretty good at stuff like that. He's been it's, on Rainy a few times. Uh, it's uh, it, it's going to be tough. I mean, especially with... <laughs> we get a lot of rain, it'll be about the 10th of May, I think. Okay. Well, they're expecting snow on Thursday or Friday. What do you guys think of your logic now? Well, if it stayed warm, it turned slushy and it stayed warm. You know, it didn't, it, even though it only was 35 or around there, it, it did melt today. I did notice when I got home. It's still going to be at least a week just to get the hard snow to melt to get to the ocean. Yeah, yeah. That's Cody That's Christensen, of course. Cody's uh, one of the best guides out there on Rainy Lake. And uh, I always try to get information from when he comes in on Island View, but he's not giving me much. Huh. You get one, you, you, you gotta, cause he's afraid I might put it on the show. You get some of them potato chips. Yeah, yeah. yeah get some potato chips out here. <laughs> but you know, if you get one good day of real hard downpour, it'll do a lot of damage to Okay, the say it did do one it'll good day of downpour. It of it. It's 48 inches. What would that rain do? <laughs> what would that rain do to that 48 inches in one day? If it downpoured all day? It'll, it'll go all the way. 36? 36? 36, 34? I'd say it'd go three quarters of the way through if it, it rains real heavy. Rain. So Jack rain says heavy. 48 times 0.75. We're sitting at about uh, 11 inches when we're done. Because runchy honeycomb, she gets pretty weak. Yeah. You know, that was one of my... Gets windy, yeah, I remember the honeycomb. It was one of my favorite cereals. We're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Thanks take us too seriously.